I like to build worlds. I like to make a record that is its own sonic space. How I style myself and what the show looks like and everything, I just want it to be of the same world. That's kind of how I approach every record is, what world do I get to build this time? The world of Daddy's Home is very much inspired by the early 70s musically, so stuff that was happening in New York City from 70 to 75, this like down and out kind of sleazy world where you had such an amazing confluence of music, right? You had people like the Velvet Underground and you had people like Steely Dan and Stevie Wonder making these fusion records that were both so groove-based and cool, but also kind of telling the real story of what was kind of going on culturally. At the holiday party Red one lived a little early At the holiday party is a song that for me is sort of my modern version of the Stones, You Can't Always Get What You Want, but from a slightly more feminine perspective. And I could write the story because I've been on both sides of it. At the Holiday Party was the first song that I worked on with Jack Antonoff for the record Daddy's Home. I played him the part of the song that I had, and, and he kind of goes in, he's playing some Wurlitzer, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. I pick up an acoustic guitar, and I'm you know, play that part at the top. And and then he kind of tracked some drums and it was really cool. And I called my buddy, Michael Linhart, who's the, oddly enough, the musical director for Steely Dan. So he definitely knows the world, the reference. He came and laid down some horns on it. And kind of by the end of the day, besides the, having the background vocals, it was like, oh yeah, this is the vibe. I kind of had discovered the palette for the whole record and it was just, you know, us vibing at Electric Lady Studios in New York. That was the song I think that got me knowing what the North Star of the record was. On the record I used an RCA 77, which is a ribbon mic from the 40s, like old broadcasting microphone, which I love. But when I heard that I had the opportunity to sing into the U47 that Frank Sinatra sang into, I was like, well, we'll do that one. On Broadway. Can just keep spinning. You won't miss what you've been missing. Big iconic studios like the one we're sitting in right now. I hope they never, ever, ever go away. When you think about the amount of music, iconic music that you've heard that has been mixed on this console, the mics here, all of the words and and, and songs that have been sung into those microphones. That's a kind of history that you, you can't replicate. And it's amazing that we can do so much at home. It's amazing that we can be self-sufficient in a lot of ways in a bedroom recording thing or a home studio. I use those as well and love it. And it's a very crucial part of my process and always has been. But there's just something about the gear, the space, the vibe that I think it makes people kind of rise to the occasion. You have the ghosts of all the people in the room, and so you're trying to be part of that legacy. And I think that that inspires you to be great and put your best foot forward. When I came out with this guitar in 2016, I had not yet made my record Mass Seduction. So I played nothing but my own guitar for Mass Seduction. And then as we were making the Model 2, the Goldie model, that was while I was recording Daddy's Home. And it's more single coily. It's more of a vintage sound. And I think that how I'm playing 
on both of those records was really influenced by the design and sound of both of the guitars. Like Mass Seduction, the first model St. Vincent guitar was like a beefy rock monster, you know, and a lot of the guitar stuff on that is like, you know, heavy, mini humbucker, like, brrr. And with Daddy Some, a lot of the guitar playing is more lyrical, you know, it's more subtle. It's more about time and space and patience and bending and psychedelia. So that was definitely inspired by the tone of the Goldie. Some of the new updates, cosmetically, we switched this headstock. We made this pickguard a little bit more traditional. The colors were inspired by the palette of the Daddy's Home record. I think the gold foil pickups here are the big change. A lot of the tone of the pickups is inspired by some of the old pawn shop guitars that I used to play, like the Harmony Bobcat. The gold foils make it really, frankly, a, a different instrument in a very cool way. The pickup positions that I use the most are actually, and this surprised me even, because I thought I would be a middle of the road girl, but I've actually been really excited about the bridge pickup setting. Tonally, it like has remnants of a Strat or has remnants of a Tele, but it's not. It sounds like its own thing. One of the most surprising things to me about this guitar and seeing it played by other people is just the versatility. Like I've seen the Linda Lindas play this guitar. It was very exciting for me to see Jack White play it on SNL. I've seen total death metal people play it. I've seen it in the hands of country people, straight ahead pop, rock. It's, it's really exciting to see how different people use it and kind of what they gravitate toward and what they're making with it. The canon of music that will be made on like this style of guitar is in its infancy. People get to be part of a lineage and create something new. So no one sees you not getting, not getting what you need. Being on tour was the best. What a miracle that I get to like go out and sing and play for people. And not only get to sing and play for people every night, but the people who I was touring with, the musicians in this down and out downtown band are just unbelievable. It's eight people on stage, no tracks, no nothing, high stakes, anything could happen, you know, and you're just, actually truly in the moment with a room full of other people who are truly in the moment. And they want to go somewhere. And it's your job to, to take them there and also go there yourself. Like, hey, everybody, let's go to outer space together. Let's spend an hour and a half just being free. Live music connects us in so many ways all those people in one space getting to dream the same dream for an hour and a half. We hide behind these things so no Music brings us together in that it can express the ineffable. It can express the thing you feel deep down inside that you don't even know you feel. And that connects us all together. I don't know any other word for that than magic.